to, for the first time in forever, the show that aims to fill the gaps in all of our watch lists. Last week, we joined Kevin Bacon for what a certain Guardian of the Galaxy considers to be the greatest movie of all time, Footloose. And if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out by clicking the link in the description below. But this week, we are staying put in the 80s, although changing tones drastically for Tim Burton's beloved classic. This is Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Wait, wait a second. I am going to be talking about spoilers for this film, so consider this your warning now. You know what's really beautiful about this? You two kids pick me. You didn't have to, but you pick me. It makes me want to kiss you guys. Come on, come no. on. Give me one. Come on, you're hard. Right. Huh? All right, let's get down to this. You're right. I got a card around here somewhere. Here, here. Who do I have to kill? Here, hold that for me, would you? There. Whoa! Ah, there, you there you go. You don't have to kill anybody. Ah, possession. Good. Learn to throw your voice. Fool your friends. Fun and party. <gasps> When Beetlejuice was first released in 1988, it immediately spawned its own dedicated fanbase and catapulted director Tim Burton to one of the most in-demand filmmakers working at the time. Its off-the-wall, quirky and eccentric sense of humour, wading deep in the macabre and revelling in all things death, proved to be a refreshing take for many audiences. Beetlejuice has undoubtedly morphed into its own cultural phenomenon, even after 30 years where it's currently enjoying life at an acclaimed stage show on Broadway. Um, huh, right, okay, this should be fun. I didn't like this. I wanted to, I desperately wanted to like it. But this film didn't hit the sweet spot for me, especially when compared to some other Tim Burton films that I unabashedly adore. Now, the story of Beetlejuice is really rather simple. Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin star as a recently deceased couple start haunting their home. And when the new family move in and look to completely transform it, they turn to bio-exorcist and renowned troublemaker Beetlejuice to scare the new residents away from their home. Okay, before I delve into what I didn't like about Beetlejuice, I think I should make it perfectly clear, no one directs a film quite like Tim Burton. And in almost all of his films, the one thing that I can very rarely fault is his aesthetic style. And that goes for Beetlejuice. Everything from the costumes, the makeup, the creature designs, the practical sets, as simply a lover of daring and intricately designed practicals, Beetlejuice ticked all of those boxes in that regard. The offices found in the afterlife are a prime example of Burton's ingenuity bursting out of the screen and it's fantastic. Burton takes the classic German expressionism found in films like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and transports it into his own unique world. It perfectly balances that line of the grotesque and being cartoonish. Almost like Burton is making his own gory spin on a Looney Tunes short. The makeup and prosthetic work is flat out incredible, and it's so wonderful to see this creativity depicted on screen. Sadly, it does serve as a reminder of how seemingly obsessed Burton has now become with visual effects. And for me, as terrific as CGI can be, there is something about the practical nature of a film that makes it so involving to watch. The best comparison I can think of is the Moss Eisley Cantina scene from Star Wars, and what that meant to give audiences a look at this world conjured up by George Lucas with the various alien species and their idea of leisure. The same goes for here, with the grotesque and often bizarre deaths of others hinted at and parodied in an unexpected setting. I particularly like the detail of Juno's slit throat and how when she smokes, the smoke leaves from her neck. And it's, it's those little touches that I truly love. I thought Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis gave really strong performances. They committed to the Burton wackiness, which is, is always the best thing to do. Trust me, if you don't, you're going to end up looking like Pierce Brosnan from Mars Attacks. Yikes. A young Winona Ryder was very good also, as what I can only imagine Burton himself would look and act like if he were born female. She has these two parents, played by Catherine O'Hara and Jeffrey Jones, who are the ones looking to completely upend Davis and Baldwin's home, and for me, they were the unexpected stars of the show. O'Hara in particular is so over the top that it once again lent to a typical theme of Burton's, that those we would typically consider to be normal, 
are much stranger than anyone we would initially consider to be weird. Unfortunately, that's where my positives come to a screeching halt. The biggest issue that I have with Beetlejuice is that for the entire 90 minute runtime, I did not give a single hoot about the story or the characters. I mean, I liked Davis and Baldwin's characters, but I didn't feel like I spent anywhere near enough time with them before we're then being asked to care that their home is being transformed. Like, they, they seem like nice people, but in terms of overall characters, there's nothing to them. And the same goes for Renona Ryder. I mean, arguably, she gets the most in terms of character, but even still, she's just saddled with the generic, sad, goth stereotype. A stereotype that is synonymous with Burton's work, but one that I have found largely uninteresting. Then there's Beetlejuice himself. Look, Michael Keaton is pitching a Hail Mary in this performance and giving it a thousand percent, but. Aside from a couple absolute corkers, especially that line about rewatching The Exorcist, that was fantastic. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it! But aside from that, I didn't find him funny. For me, being outrageous and crazy will only get you so far, and in my experience with Tim Burton's full catalogue of films, that has always been my main critique. A film such as Dark Shadows, I know it's obviously based on a TV show from the late 60s, early 70s, but that film felt like such a hodgepodge of silly ideas clumped together with a ramshackled story attached to it. Now on the flip side, Burton can use his bizarre style to take a story to the next level, and that's exactly what he did in his 1990 fantasy romance, Edward Scissorhands. And that is a film I consider to be his best work, a beautiful tale that is enhanced by his visual flair and eccentricity. Beetlejuice didn't have that spark. Much of the time, the humor fell flat. Now, everyone seems to love the dinner scene where Lydia's parents and their dinner guests become possessed and dance around to the banana boat song, and I just uh, didn't really, it's, <laughs> I didn't find it funny. Also, elements look really dated, and usually I would tend to give the film the benefit of the doubt, but this did come out in the late 80s, and there were other films that had effects much better looking than some here. And then when Beetlejuice is properly unleashed and he aims to marry Lydia so he can be entirely free, I just kind of checked out. That entire ending felt so rushed and thrown together, and it had a sweet conclusion that both families now live in harmony, but once again, it felt rushed, almost as if they realised they were behind on production, threw everything in the pan, chucked it out, and then slapped the end credits on. I wanted to like Beetlejuice, I really, really did, and look, it is a tour de force in regards to its creativity and aesthetics, though that would be my primary reason to recommend this film to anyone who hasn't seen it yet, but my criticisms lie with its story and characters. It was largely uninvolving most of the time, and predominantly uninteresting, featuring characters that I cared very little about. Now, I was flip-flopping between what I would give Beetlejuice, but I, I can't overlook the fact that the art direction of this film is outstanding. So, after watching Beetlejuice for the first time in forever, by the skin of its teeth, I'm gonna say that it's not urgent. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that film. Let me know, have you seen Beetlejuice yet? Is it one of your favorite Tim Burton films? Or do you have another? Like I said, mine is Edward Scissorhands. I think that is just, like I said, a beautiful, beautiful movie. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. But before I go, here is a little teaser for next week's episode. Hello. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you have make sure to click that like button and if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.